we're talking today about how everyone lives in imitation of somebody else. We model our lives on the examples of others. This is why it's important to choose a good example. It's not bad that we live in imitation. It's not necessary to be totally original in your life. Especially when we have good examples to follow. The Buddha, the noble disciples, people whose lives are an expression of some very important truths. In particular, the truth that truth is not simply a matter of statements or ideas. It's a quality of the character. The truth with which you perceive the truth is going to actually determine whether you can attain any kind of truth. When you see what needs to be done, when you check and are careful to look at your actions, the results of your actions, that care you take is an important part of the truth, because you really want to get around your delusion. We, we all know we start with delusion. We've got lots of delusion in so many different places. And the best way to chip away at that delusion is to look very directly at our actions and then to look at the results. This is how the Buddha said, this is how we overcome doubt, to see what qualities of the mind are skillful and what ones are not, are not skillful by looking at what they actually lead to. And this is how we also develop that wisdom faculty and the factors of awakening, the one that's called analysis of qualities, dhamma Looking at what's skillful in our actions, what's not skillful. It's important that we realize we overcome doubt not simply by forcing ourselves to believe something, but by looking carefully at what we're doing and learning how to check the conclusions we come to. This is what converts the original wisdom of when you look for happiness that's long term into another one of the Buddha's qualities, which is purity. The Buddha told Rahula when he taught him this method of looking at his actions. This is how people achieve purity, so being very careful, being very true. In fact, he prefaced his remarks with the principle of telling the truth. You probably know the story. Rahula provides a jar of water with a dipper for the Buddha to wash his feet. He sees the Buddha coming from afar, so he sets out the jar of the dipper. The Buddha washes his feet, leaves a little bit of water in the dipper. He says to Ruhullah, you see how little water there is in this dipper? The Ruhullah says, yes. The Buddha says, that's how little there is of a contemplative. And here with the word samanya, the quality of a contemplative, can also mean just generally goodness. That's how little goodness there is in a person who tells a deliberate lie and feels no shame at it. Then he throws the water away. He says, see how that water has been thrown away? Rolo says, yes. That's what happens to the goodness, the quality of a contemplative and someone who tells a deliberate lie with no sense of shame. The goodness gets thrown away. Similarly, with a, when he overturns the dipper and then when he shows how hollow and empty the dipper is. If you tell a deliberate lie and say, feel no sense of shame, then you are overturned and hollow and empty in just the same way. So in establishing the principle of truthfulness, and the Buddha says, this is the principle you use in looking at yourself, that you really be true. And so you want to look for people who are true, people to associate with, people to model your life on, people who have integrity. And you look in all their, their actions, the kind of help they give to other people, the gifts they give, the way they give a gift, the way they conduct an argument. 
This is especially revealing. I've had the opportunity to deal with some very famous Buddhist scholars in a discussions back and forth by letter. And all this, that particular scholar has a reputation for being very principled and very, very honest. The way he conducted his arguments was dishonest. I would make a statement and he would come back and say, well, I'm going to disprove your statement, but before disproving it, he turned it into something else. And so I pointed this out to him. And it never seemed to register. So I had to conclude, okay, this is a person whose integrity is not all around, not someone I can trust. So that too is something you want to look for. How do people conduct their arguments? There's a passage where the Buddha is dealing with some followers of the Jains. They have some questions and some issues they want to bring with them, and so he makes some conditions. With one of them he says, okay, if we will base our discussion on the truth, then we can have a discussion. With another he says, if you will accept what should be accepted, reject what should be rejected, and if there's anything you don't understand, ask the meaning, then we can have a discussion. In the course of one of those discussions, the person who said that he would stand on the truth starts making statements that contradict what he said earlier on. The Buddha calls him on this, saying, hey, I thought you were going to stand on the truth, which means being consistent is a way of standing on the truth. But also notice that passage where he says, if there's something you don't understand, ask. Cross-question me about it right then and there. Now, don't simply jump on something as being obscure and impossible to understand and attack on the basis of that. We're here to find out the truth. And that's the quest all along, is this search for the truth in all of its forms, both as truths of statements and truth of the character. And as the Buddha said, you, you sense this in other people, the more you develop your own truth. This is how you turn from that student who's the, the spoon in the curry, never knows the taste of the curry, you turn into the tongue. You immediately taste what's going on. You understand. Because you have trained yourself. And so when looking for examples, you want to look for people who are, are true in all the different dimensions of that word. And that's how you find true happiness. It's in imitation of truthful people that we become true ourselves. The fact that we see their example, we appreciate that. That gives rise to the desire that we want to have that kind of truth as well. So ultimately it's not just imitation. They inspire us, but it's through the honesty of our inner search. that we find the honest truth.